Hi there, uh, my name is James and I lead a prayer movement here in England called Prayer Storm. And uh, we recently put out a call uh, to the church uh, to call uh, God's people to a day of fasting and prayer. Um, and I'm just wanting to do a short video just to really talk about fasting because uh, the more I've kind of talked to people about this, I realized many Christians, many young people have never fasted before and don't understand the purpose of fasting and don't understand the power of fasting and all that kind of stuff. So I really want to do a really short video to, I guess, just give some insight into why we fast, uh, how to fast and, and all kinds of questions that I think people tend to have when it comes to fasting. So to start with, I, I want you to understand that fasting is not for super spiritual Christians. Fasting is not for special people. You know, fasting is simple and fasting is for everyone. Well, we fast first and foremost, I believe, to humble ourselves before God. Fasting doesn't change God. Fasting changes you. So when we fast, we quieten the desires of the flesh so that the desires of the spirit and the appetite for God would increase and we can hear God clearly. So we quieten the flesh so that the voice of the Spirit is louder. Okay, so we fast one to humble ourselves before God. Fasting leads to an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. You know, Joel 2 is a very key scripture for us as a prayer movement uh, because in Joel 2, the people of God are facing the judgment of God, and God says to them, Call a solemn assembly, gather all the inhabitants of the land, call a fast. Okay, and the promise at the end of the fast in verse 28 of the book of Joel chapter 2, he says, afterwards, I'll pour my spirit on all flesh. God promises the outpouring of his spirit on all flesh in the context of the people of God coming together to fast and seek him. So fasting, I believe, is the precursor and fasting is part of the precursor, including prayer, to the outpouring of God's spirit upon a people, group, or a nation. Three, fasting releases the power of the Holy Spirit. In the book of Luke, we see Jesus going into the wilderness filled with the Spirit after being baptized and then after his 40 days of fasting it says he comes out of the wilderness in the power of the Spirit so there's a difference between being filled with the Spirit and moving in the power of the Spirit number four fasting sharpens our spiritual gifts and our awareness of the Holy Spirit when we fast we become more sensitive to what the Holy Spirit is doing and our hearts become more awakened and aware of his presence now, there is no point fasting if you're not going to spend time in prayer, okay? If you're fasting, abstaining from food, and you're not spending time with God and just doing that, I tell you what, you're just starving yourself, okay? We fast for the purpose of seeking God in a deeper way, okay? So if you're going to make time to fast, then you have to make extra time to seek God in that time of fasting. Okay, so now let's talk about types of fasts. Um, I want to start with probably the most extreme one, which is the dry fast. Uh, dry fast is basically when you go without food or water. I wouldn't encourage you to go on this fast <laughs> unless you really, really feel like God is leading you to do this. You know, uh, you know, uh, I've only been on a dry fast a, a few times and, you know, generally just for a day. But uh, 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 Moses went on a dry fast for 40 days, no food and no water. It was, it was a supernatural thing, really, because, you know, it was in the presence of God. It was on the mountain and all that kind of stuff. And if you read about uh, Moses, you find that actually he did 120 days of fasting, which is crazy. But anyway, another person in the Bible who went on a dry fast and uh, actually the whole nation went on a dry fast is Esther. In the book of Esther, uh, we see Esther calling the nation to a fast. That was a dry fast. Two, a full fast. A full fast is when you go without food, okay, but you have water. And sometimes I would have water and liquids. I put I put those in the same category, really. Uh, because like me, you know, most people, you're working and, uh, you know, when I'm doing a, a full fast, you know, I've got to have some some, some bit of energy, so I have liquids. So a full fast basically is no food but water and liquids. Or you could, some people could do just no food and just have water. Number three, a partial fast. A partial fast is when you skip certain meals. So, you know, I, I'd like to, when people have never fasted before, I generally would encourage them to start this way. As opposed to just going, you know, for a 40 day fast out of zeal, you know, I wouldn't encourage anyone to do that if you've never fasted before. I'll say, you know, start by, you know, just skip a meal. So maybe skip breakfast and instead of, you know, 
instead of having breakfast, you know, spend that time praying, you know, or skip your lunch. And instead of having your lunch, spend that time praying and seeking God. Okay. So start in that way and build your stamina, your physical stamina, your spiritual stamina, you know. So I'd encourage people to start on that basis if you've never fasted before. But a partial fast is basically skipping a meal. Uh, number four, a Daniel fast. You can read about this in the book of Daniel. Basically, it's water and vegetables. And if you search online, you find all types of Daniel fasts, okay? Uh, I, 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 with a Daniel fast, you obviously eat, but, you know, you're just eating certain foods. Um, um, oh, yeah, so that's the Daniel fast. Uh, number five, uh, I'll call the other types of fast. Now, I say other types of fast because I believe there are other ways of fasting that's not necessarily just food. Now, the whole concept of fasting is about denying denying the flesh and the self and self. So for some people, actually not watching TV is a big, big, big deal because they're addicted to it and it feels, feeds their flesh. So when I say other types of fast, that would include things like media fast, Facebook, you know, TV, sports, you know, whatever it is, you know, movies, whatever, you know, other things that ca caffeine, you know, other things that, you know, are pretty much an addiction that are not necessarily bad things, but you just find that you can't do without them. Chocolate, for example, you know things like that you know you could you could choose to do that uh, or to to do without that and that could be a legitimate legitimate form of fasting because you're actually abstaining from things and as you abstain from those things you're giving yourself more to seeking God okay so some guidelines when fasting one be wise okay don't do anything stupid okay if you've got health issues, if you're pregnant, if you've got eating disorders, then I wouldn't be expecting you to be going on a food fast, okay? And, you know, if you've never fasted before, don't just decide, oh, I'm going to go on a 40-day fast, no food, no water, you know, to become some sort of spiritual whatever, okay? Be wise, okay? Combine wisdom with your faith, okay? And think before you do stuff. Number two, be accountable, okay? Especially for those of you who are under 18, you can't just decide not to eat. You know, your parents are like, what are you doing? What's going on? You know, you got to be open about what's going on. You got to talk to your youth leader. You got to talk to your parents about what you feel God leading you to do. And I would say, take their advice and encouragement and let that spur you on in what you're doing. Don't try to fast in isolation, okay? I don't believe in that. If you're not under 18, the same applies. I think we all need to be accountable because even as you fast, there are times when you're going to find it hard. And because you've already opened up to, you know, someone, you know, your leader or, you know, your, your pastor or your parent or whatever, you know, that you're going to go on this fast, then, you know, that's a form of accountability. So when you're struggling, they're there to help you and encourage you through it. These are words from David. I will not give God that which cost me nothing. I believe fasting actually costs and sacrifice releases spiritual power. So for me, for example, Daniel fasts uh, doesn't seem to cost me anything. And for some people, it's a big, big deal to go on a Daniel fast, just vegetables and water. For me, it's like, you know, I feel like I'm eating. So I wouldn't do a Daniel fast because I don't feel like it costs me anything. Whereas I might, I might choose to do other forms of fasting that I feel is, a, is, 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 is quietening my flesh and it's a cost to my flesh. Number four, if you fail during your fast, if you end up eating, if you end up doing whatever that you were thinking you weren't gonna do as you're gonna be fasting, don't get on the condemnation, just start all over again and ask God for grace, which leads me to the last point. Ask God, number five, ask God for grace. It takes God to love God. And it takes God to be able to seek him in an intense way. So ask him for the grace to fast and pray. You know, I've been on many fasts in my life and I've seen the power of fasting. I've seen God move. I've seen just amazing things happen in times of fasting and seeking God. So I know the power of fasting. So I'm making this video to encourage you to tap into what's already made available to you. Now, I also want to make it clear, with fasting, you're not trying to earn anything from God. Fasting does not earn you almost like special points, okay? Fasting just positions you to receive what's already been freely given to you. 
If you have more questions on fasting, I'd encourage you to comment on this video or send us an email um, or something. Now, there's so many resources online uh, about fasting. You know, so many books have been written about fasting. I encourage you to, you know, to, to read uh, materials from people like Derek Prince, you know, Mike Bickle. Uh, I think uh, there's uh, Jensen Franklin. I don't know if I said his name right, but, you know, he's written, uh, I'm sure, a couple of books at least on fasting. Um, so there's so much out there. Uh, so I want to encourage you to join us on this journey as we gather together to seek God for awakening in this nation. If you want to find out more about Prayer Storm, just go on our website, prayerstorm.org. God bless you.